the sort of behavior I was observing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just uh, ethics in terms of their business life. It was the ethics in terms of their family life, uh, the way they interacted with their wives, with their children, etc. Very powerful behavioral example. Mm -hmm. And I observed this for about 16 months. And finally, oh, it must have been in December of 1992, I got around to asking myself the sort of the fundamental question, which is what separates these Muslim friends of mine from me in terms of belief? Well, where's the difference? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I had studied uh, Islam sort of superficially yes. or briefly back uh, at Harvard uh, in comparative religions courses. And, uh, but this question was eating at me. Mm -hmm. I mean, here are these people living these very moral and upright lives. My wife and I have been trying to do that as well, but we felt that we were sort of doing that within the context of a moral vacuum. Yeah. What separates me from them in terms of actual religious beliefs? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose I could have asked them. Yeah. I didn't want to. Okay. I, I didn't want to impinge on our friendship. Yeah. And so I went downstairs, began dusting off all the books on Islam mm -hmm. I had acquired back in those comparative religions courses. Yes. And they were all written by non-Muslim Western scholars. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a half a dozen or more of them. And I took them down, I reread them. I took down two different translations of the meaning of the Quran that mm -hmm. I had acquired back in those courses, read them. And the more I read, the more I said, no, wait a minute, you know, this, this is what I believe. Starting to connect. Yeah, very much starting to connect. And the other thing that eventually happened in that process was as I continued to read in the English translations of the meaning of the Quran, especially where it was talking about uh, biblical history yes. uh, and biblical concepts, I saw within the Quran statements about these things that I knew could not have been known by any illiterate 7th century Arab. And of course, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was illiterate. Uh, he didn't know how to read, write. The history no, confirms no. this. Yes, yes. And he was known as the truthful. Yes, yes, yes. And so now I'm left with a question. Yeah. <laughs> Where did this come from? So you're looking at this and you're like, this he, can't he couldn't come have known from, it. from this man or he any man. No, he couldn't have known it. Uh -huh. uh, and so that left me with, with the conclusion, you know, this had to be inspired. Yeah. However you want to define inspired, yeah. in some sense this knowledge was inspired by God. Wow, subhanAllah. And uh, quite honestly, brother, I was uncomfortable with that conclusion. Why? I didn't like that conclusion. Uh -huh. Because that raised questions about my own sense of religious identity. Yeah. You know, I still continued to call myself a Christian, mm -hmm. even though I was an atypical Christian. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that challenge to my sense of identity. So th this is where things started, about in December of 1992. And in late December of 1992, my wife and I were talking about this all the way through. We were filling out our passport application forms for a proposed trip to the Middle East to do some research on the history of the Arabian Wars. And one of the questions on the passport form was religious affiliation. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't even think about it. You know, I just wrote in Christian and went on. Yeah. And a few seconds later, my wife turned to me and said, uh, how did you fill out the question on religious affiliation? And I said, well, Christian, <laughs> of course. And I, I laughed just as you're laughing right now. Yeah. Uh, and then went on to say, you know, I'm a Christian, not a Muslim. Now, is it same t at the same time, is she doing her own research with you along with yeah, you? Yeah, we're talking about it all the way all through. All the time, okay. Yeah. Okay, now the thing is, in terms of this story, uh -huh. you know, I, I was trained, have a doctorate in clinical psychology. Yeah. You know, I was a practicing psychotherapist. I knew that laughter is often a release of psychological tension. Uh -huh. And I had laughed at this question. Yeah. Oh, what was the psychological tension that needed to be released yeah. when my wife asked me, this innocuous question. Furthermore, why did I need to immediately follow it up by saying I'm a Christian, not a Muslim? Mm. You know, a person does not defend against an accusation that has not been made. 
Now, my wife hadn't said, did you write down Muslim? In fact, her response when I said, I'm a Christian, not a Muslim, her immediate response was, well, no, I was inquiring whether you wrote down Christian or Protestant or Methodist. <laughs> uh, so the accusation yeah. had come from my own unconscious mind. Uh -huh. You know, there was a part of my own unconscious mind that was saying, you're a Muslim. Yeah. And my conscious mind was saying, oh, no, I'm not. It's a battle within now. Yeah, it's a battle within. And this battle continued. Mm -hmm. You know, by January of 1993, I was now reading my third different English translation of the meaning mm -hmm. of the Quran. You know, because, again, I wasn't going to trust these first two. You know, I, I didn't like that conclusion I had come to. Yeah. that Muhammad, peace be upon him, had been inspired by God. Yeah. Because this raised issues in terms of my own identity. Yes. Well, I continued studying now, and in January of 1993, I began experimenting with saying the five daily prayers of Islam alone, in private, and of course in English, mm -hmm. because I didn't know the Arabic to do it yeah. that way. And I found this very spiritually rewarding, very spiritually gratifying. Um, but again, I'm an atypical Christian. I may be an atypical Christian who doesn't believe in the divinity of Jesus, who doesn't believe in the Trinity, who's reading the Quran every day in English translation, and is saying the five prayers of Islam every day in English. But I'm still an atypical Christian. Yeah. Well, late in January of 1993, mm -hmm. it was my lunch hour at my private practice, so I went to a, uh, an Arab restaurant I had started to frequent. And I took with me my third translation of the Quran, thought I'd get some reading done over lunch. Yeah. And so I walked in, I sat down, and I started reading. And all of a sudden, Mahmoud, the owner of the restaurant, who was from Damascus and, and a Muslim, uh, came up to my table to take my order. He glanced down at what I was reading, but he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Took my order and left, and so I continued reading. Well, when my order was ready, instead of Mahmoud bringing it back to me, he sent his wife to bring it to me, who was an American yeah. and a convert to Islam. Oh, she had accepted Islam. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. and, and wore the hijab, the uh -huh. scarf that I'd come to associate with Muslim females. And so Sister Iman came, and she brought me my order, and she glanced down and said, Oh, I see you're reading the Quran. Are you a Muslim? And the word was out of my mouth before it could be modified by any social etiquette whatsoever. I said, No! <laughs> And about that way, brother. And she said, well, that's okay. And she turned around and left. And I said to myself, my goodness, what is going on with me? <laughs> you know, I've answered uh -huh. an innocuous question rudely and aggressively. Uh, this isn't like me. And I started stewing over it then as I ate my lunch. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to make some amends to Sister Maman yeah. when she comes back to bring me the check for uh -huh. the meal. And so I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. And when the meal was over, she brought me the check, and I said uh, something to the extent of, you know, I, I think I answered your question a little abruptly yeah. uh, when you asked me whether I was a Muslim. If you were asking me whether I believe there is only one God, yeah. my answer is yes. And if you were asking me whether I believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, though I didn't say that at that point, yeah. was one of the prophets of God, my answer is yes. So this is from researching now, looking into his life and reading the Quran, yes. that you're coming to this conclusion. Yes, now. yes. But you just didn't want to, the identity now is the problem. The identity is an issue. Yeah. And uh, I knew at that point that in my own English words, I had just said the Shahada yeah. or the Islamic testimonial of faith. Uh -huh. And Sister Iman very nicely smiled and said, that's okay, it takes some people a little longer than others, <laughs> and, and left me yeah. to, to stew on it a little more. Uh -huh. Now again, I knew I had just said the Shahada, but I was still an atypical Christian, mind you. Uh -huh. You know, Now I'm an atypical Christian who's reading the Quran in English translation, saying the five daily prayers of Islam in English and yeah. private, is willing to say the Shahada in my own carefully parsed English words, mm -hmm. but I'm still an atypical Christian. I'm not a Muslim. Yeah. If somebody else, some Muslim, wants to take what I've said and say, you're a Muslim, that's their label of religious identity. Just real it's quick, not mine. Define what a Muslim is really quickly, just and then continue on, please. Well, a Muslim is one, by definition, by definition. Uh, linguistically, one who submits, and that's one who submits to God. Uh, but typically, one says a person becomes a Muslim when they say the Shahada or the testimonial of faith. And that just made easy, summed up with one word in Arabic. 
right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. simple, okay. So 